Hello, my little mathematicians. We're going to go through the study guide E27 and E28 today, focusing on equations and inequalities. Let's go ahead and get started. But remember, you can always pause the video, try it yourself, unpause it, and then join us to check yourself. All right. So starting with the first one, okay, it says, is 5 the solution to x plus 8 equals 13? So essentially, you're just checking it for this person. So I'm going to substitute in what they think the answer is for x. They think it's 5. Bring down plus 8 equals 13. And simplify. 5 plus 8 is 13. Bring down the equals and 13. That's a true statement. So you're like, yes, good job, person. 5 was the right answer. So you got it right. And they were asking you, is that the solution? Yes, it is. Now that's different than if the direction said, hey, can you solve for x? Now we purposely, I don't want to say the term dumb it down, but we did. We dumbed the numbers down. We made them a lot easier so that you can focus on doing the inverse steps so that next year when it gets a lot harder, the inverse steps and checking your answers becomes like second nature when it gets harder. Okay. And then you can then do it in your head, like what you're complaining about of, I don't need to show my work. I can do it in my head. Great. Check your answer in your head to make sure that you got it right. But what we're mainly grading you on is the steps so that next year when it gets a lot harder and you can't do it in your head, the steps are now second nature for you. Okay. So your steps, draw a line down from your equal sign that divides the equation in half. Then do the inverse to get x by itself or to isolate your variable. How do I get rid of this minus 10? Well, the inverse of minus 10 is to add 10. 10 minus 10 is zero, so those cancel. Now you have x by itself because x plus zero is just x. But whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So I'm gonna add 10 over there. Three plus 10 is 13. So you got an answer of 13. So you'd write x equals 13 or just 13. And then before you move on, check it. Instead of writing out the words check, I just do a check mark. And to check it, I write my original equation. I substitute in what I think the answer is. I think it's 13. And then simplify it and make sure it made a true statement. So 13 minus 10 is 3. Bring down the equals, bring down the three. That's a true statement. So then you're like, yes, 13 was right. This also kind of saves you so that later, like if you accidentally get like 23 equals three, you'd be like, oh, wait a minute. No, that doesn't make any sense. Or if you got seven equals three, that doesn't make any sense. Um, and so then you would erase this and try the problem again because maybe you made a math error somewhere. This is your chance to check it so that you don't get your quiz back and be like, oh, I knew how to do it. I just made a simple math there. When you check it, you can hopefully catch that error, erase it, and try it again before you turn your test in, okay? That's the whole point of checking. And I know that, yes, we gave you easy problems because we want you to focus on the steps. So you're like, I don't need to even check it. It's so easy. Okay, well, next year when it's not easy, now it's second nature of how to check your work, okay? But Hey, if you did make a simple math there, hopefully checking helped you catch any of those. I hope I've, I can get down off my soapbox now and you can understand the importance of why we're doing what we're doing. Okay. Um, for this one, you want to solve it. So draw a line down from your equal sign. To get x by itself, you do the inverse. These are being multiplied. The inverse of multiplication is to divide by 4. You do that because 4 divided by 4 is 1. So you have 1 times x, or just x. And then when you divide 4 on this side, 32 divided by 4 is 8. So in the answer column, you'd write x equals 8, or just 8. And then before you move on to the next problem, check it. 4x equals 32. 4 times you think x is 8 equals 32. 4 times 8 is 32. Bring down the equals. Bring down the 32. It ended with a true statement. So you're like, yes, sweet victory. I can move on to number 4, knowing that I got this one right. The trap. Please do not write 32 in the answer column. The answer is 8. This was me checking it to see I got a true statement when I substituted in the answer of 8. That's why I noticed how each time for these problems before I checked it, 
I wrote my answer of 13 in the answer column and my answer of eight in the answer column. Just some helpful tidbits because believe it or not, I don't like marking your test in red. I want you to get 100%. I'm trying to give you helps to get you there. Number four says write an equation and solve. So I'm going to write it as I read it. It says the number of eggs E, use whatever variable they say. If it's a lowercase e they want, then use a lowercase e. If it's a capital Y, then use a capital Y. Um, so they said they want E. So the eggs E increased by, what does that mean? Add. Increased by what? 12. Is means equals 48. There you go. That was me writing my equation. A was E plus 12 equals 48. I wrote the equation. Then they say, please solve it. Okay. So to solve it, I want to get my variable by itself. Well, the inverse of plus 12 is to subtract 12. Whatever you do to one side, do to the other. Well, 12 minus 12 cancels to zero because right, 12 minus 12 is zero. Now you have E plus zero or just E. Bring down your equals and 48 minus 12, that's six, that's three. You get E equals 36 or just 36 for your answer. Okay, my next one, graph the inequality, X is greater than or equal to negative two. So on here, here's one, two, three, and negative one, negative two, negative three. So at negative two, is it an open or closed circle? Well, there's a line underneath, so it says it's including that point. If there was no line underneath, it would be an open circle. And it's all the numbers greater than. Notice how it's the great big open end facing my variable. So where do numbers get bigger? To the right. And double check. You want numbers bigger than negative two, three, two, one, zero. Those are all bigger. So yep, it's going in the right direction. Or you can use the arrowhead trick. When you have the variable on the left, this can act as kind of like your arrow and there's your arrowhead. It's pointing in that direction. Okay, in the answer column, it says C graph. So I would look at your graph right here. Okay, you don't need to write anything in the answer column. All right, go ahead and move on. And it says solve the following equations. This is kind of like what we did for two and three. So I'm gonna draw a line down for my equal sign. To get x by itself, this is saying x divided by three. So the inverse of dividing by three is to multiply by three. Whatever you do to one side, do to the other. Now these threes cross cancel to become just one. So you have one times x or just x. On this side, nine times three is 27. So you have x equals 27 or just 27. Before we move on, let's check it because I want to get 100%. So in case I made an error, this is my chance to catch it. There's my original equation. Substitute in what you think the answer is. And then simplify and see if you get a true statement. 27 divided by 3 is 9. Bring down the equals and the 9. That's true, right? 9 equals 9. So, yep, 27 was right. Let's move on to the next problem. Draw a line down from your equal sign. Here's where my x is. So... I want to get rid of this plus 9. The inverse of plus 9 is to subtract 9. Whatever you do to one side, do to the other. Those cancel. 9 minus 9 is 0. Bring down your x, which notice is on this side. So I brought it down on this side. And then bring down your equals. And then simplify. 17 minus 9 is 8. Okay, so in the answer column, you can write 8 equals x, x equals 8, or even just 8. Okay, I'm fine with that. Um, but when you're showing your work, bring your variable down on whatever side it's on because that makes a difference. Um, maybe not so much this year. I know you don't see because they're so simple. But in the future, like there's going to be variables on both sides and get in the habit of bringing it down wherever it is. Okay, and so then here's where your work is. And then in the answer column, sure, you can write x equals 8 because that's the same thing as 8 equals x. Um, and then before I move on, I want to check it. 17 equals x plus 9. I think x is 8. So bring down my 17 equals 8 plus 9 is 17. True statement. So sweet. I can move on to the next one. Uh, 
Um, okay. Right here, to get y by itself, what's the inverse of negative 15? To add 15. 15 minus 15 cancels. And you get y equals, well, add 15 to this side. And you get what? 40. So in the answer column, I'm going to put y equals 40 or just 40. In order to check it, I'm going to actually pretend that I made a mistake. And what if I accidentally subtracted these and I got 10? Okay. Like, yeah, 25 minus 15 is indeed 10. And so in case you just rushed and you made that mistake, here's why I want us to check it. Because if you accidentally put that the answer was 10, when you substitute that in, you would get 10 minus 15 is negative 5, or you maybe you accidentally just put 5, but it's negative 5. Um, or you just get stumped and be like, what? That doesn't equal 25. I don't understand. That would be your alarm bell to erase the problem, try it again. And then you'd be like, oh, I was supposed to add 15. 25 plus 15 is 40, right? And then you have 40 minus 15. And when you work that out, 40 minus 15, you get 25. And then you end with the true statement because we plugged in the correct solution of 40. That's the point of checking that just in case you made a mistake somewhere, when you go to plug it back in, you'd end with an untrue statement like I just did. And then you'd be like, oh, okay, let, let me, let me try it again. And then you can turn your test in with the correct answer instead of the wrong answer because you found your error when you checked it. I'm not making you do this because I don't like you. I'm doing it because I love you and I want you to get 100%, right? Okay. Um, number nine, these are being multiplied. What's the inverse of multiplying? To divide. Divide by that number in front of X. Do it on both sides. Seven divided by seven is one. So now you have one times X or just X. 56 divided by seven is eight. So in the answer column, I'd write x equals 8 or just 8. Before you move on, check it. 7x equals 56. I think x is 8. 7 times 8 is 56. Bring down the equals. Bring down the 56. Yep, it ended as a true statement. So then you, with confidence, know that you are right. Okay, the next one, number 10. <coughs> it says graph the inequality x is less than 3. So this is negative 1 negative two, negative three, positive one, positive two, positive three, four. At three, I'm gonna draw my circle. Is it open or closed? Well, there's no line underneath, so it's not including that point. It's an open circle. What's facing the variable? It's the less than sign. So where do numbers get smaller? To the left. Isn't two, one, zero less than three? Mm -hmm. Or since the variable's on my left, there's your arrowhead, right? Please write down these bonus ones and try these. Okay, all you're doing is graphing those two. Okay, now you unpause the video, you're back with us. Let's see how you did. You're gonna draw a circle at five and you're gonna draw a circle at six. This one is shaded in because it's or less than um, or equal to, and then this one's a greater than or equal to. So I'm gonna shade that one in as well. Now, those of you that really like the arrowhead trick, this looks like, oh, the arrowhead's pointing to the left. But remember, we said that's if your variable's on this side. So for this one, the variable's on this side, so I can use the arrowhead trick. It's pointing to the right. So there you go. It's all the numbers greater than six. So the great big open end is facing the variables. Here, the less than isn't facing the um, variable. The great big open end is facing the variable. So it's actually also going this way. Because if I wanted to use the arrowhead trick, I would have to rewrite it with x on this side and five on this side. And then I would flip the direction of my inequality and it would say x is greater than or equal to five. And then look, arrowhead is pointing that way. Okay. Or you can just look at what's facing your variable, the great big open end and numbers get bigger that way. Any way you want to look at it, it's going to the right for both of those. Okay. Hopefully you did all right on those. 
last two problems. Please try to set up these equations from the word problems and then try to solve them. The first one says, all the seats in the theater are divided into four groups. There are 45 seats in each group. Using the variable S, write and solve a division equation to find how many seats there are in the theater. Okay, so it said that um, using the variable S is what they want, so use a lowercase s. So you have some amount of seats. We don't know what amount of seats. They're divided up into um, four groups, and then it's divided up equally so that each group has an equal amount of 45 seats. There's my equation. Okay, think of strategy as the equation that they want. Now, to solve it, here's my workspace. To get S by itself, draw a line down. What's preventing S from being by itself? This 4, and it's being divided. What's the inverse of dividing by 4? To multiply by 4. Whatever you do to one side, do to the other. Now, those 4s cancel and become 1 right? Because they're diagonally across from each other. Think of like fractions, they cross cancel. Now you have one times S, which is just S. Over here, 45 times four, you get that 16 plus two is 18. So 180. So that means that there are 180 seats in the theater. Okay, for the next one, it says Ted bought a dolphin poster. So when you buy something that's spending money, and it was 13 bucks, he now has 550, right? And solve a subtraction equation to find out how much money he took with him to the aquarium. So we took some amount of money. We don't know how much that was. And then I bought something for 13 bucks. Now I have 550. There's my equation. And then to solve it, the inverse of subtracting is to add 13. Now those cancel, 13 minus 13 is zero. I got X by itself because X plus zero is just X. But whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. And I'm talking about money. So line up your decimal and $13, right? So then add down, that's zero, that's five, bring the decimal down, five and three make eight, bring down the one, which means your answer is he brought $18.50 with him to the aquarium. If you got all those right, congratulations, my little mathematicians, you have mastered equations and inequalities.